are here again at the Lily Channel, and I am so excited. I finally get to interview Jeff Griffith of Jeff Griffith Creative and stumble over my words because I'm so excited. <laughs> but we met. Do you want to tell them how we met? You go. Okay. One Million Cups in Eden Prairie. The most amazing networking group of its kind. And so you got to check it out on the internet and then come visit us in Eden Prairie. And it's my mission to be helping entrepreneurs and part of that way of doing so is to put them on my channel so that other people get exposed to what they do. I have other missions, but that's part of my big mission. And you've got to hear about this guy because I haven't had that many creative people on here. Whoa. And <laughs> we're all creative in some way because you have to be to survive. But visually creative, pulling people together, creative, branding, logos, etc. cetera. If, if a 10-year-old were to ask you, how, what do you do? What would you say? Oh boy, <laughs> that's a, that's a good question. If a ten year old asked me, I would probably just simplify it and say, "I'm a designer. Hmm. I design. I mean, that's I. I always approach things from an artistic point of view, from a creative point of view, uh, a visual point of view. Um, so it really comes down to that. But I mean, I'm a creative director. I'm a branding person. So. I don't draw. I'm a horrible drawer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've taken drawing classes and I suck at it. Um, <laughs> but um, but I'm very good at design and kind of bringing things together. And uh, my background was ad agencies. And mm -hmm. so I worked in ad agencies most of my career in Hawaii and Atlanta and New York City wow. and San Francisco and then back to New York City and then moved to Minneapolis area. Um, but it's as a creative director, you, you pull from other elements. You bring people together. Um, yeah. I don't, I'm not a photographer, but I have a great eye for photography. So I hire great photographers Makes or sense. I, I bring in directors or cameramen or sound people or music people. And you kind of bring it all together wow. and then you make like a really great chili. Yeah. Okay. That's the best way I've ever heard of describing a creative director. And I didn't actually ever know what they did. Right. It's like a refined networker. Yeah. Just for creative work. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Or even like a, or like a chef. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you're not, you know, you're not making the, the bread necessarily. Well, I guess some people do, but you're bringing, you're taking all the ingredients and you're putting it all together. And then, yeah. and then it's your vision that kind of goes through and it's like, yeah. So networking isn't, it's not the right analogy. Forget the analogy. It's, it's like, you have to be a great networker in order to find the people you need. Absolutely. Like yeah. Absolutely. And I have found that, you know, sometimes you might have a friend or somebody that you're like, Oh, you know, this person takes, you know, does photography or this person does this. And you're like, yeah, but for this particular project, that's not the right person. Mm, and okay. you have to be able to say that like, yeah, for this project, this is not going to work. Yep. You know, this person's a portrait photographer. What I need is a landscape photographer, uh, or I need somebody who's got a real, you know, great sense of humor behind the camera yeah. who can work with a humorous script. Ooh. You know, I mean, I've done hundreds of TV commercials in my life okay. and, and a lot of videos, hundreds of videos. And, but you need to bring the right people together for each project. You can't just like, I'm always going to use these people because they don't, that wow. group doesn't always work. It's like networking mixed with dating game mixed with. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Exactly. Yes. And I just saw a Gettysburg related video. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're really interested in veterans. Yep. And history. Yep. Been interested in history. Uh, here. Since I was four years old. Absolutely. I've been a, a fanatical history buff. Um, we went to Disneyland when I was a kid and it was the, uh, the first animarobotronic was <laughs> before the hall of presidents okay. was just Abraham Lincoln. Huh. And it was called, I believe it was called an afternoon with Mr. Lincoln. And so he stood up and, <laughs> and apparently I was obsessed. Wow. And, and my mom, God bless my mom and dad, they completely fanned the flames. And I had in my room, I had, you know, 
posters of battlefield maps and presidents of the United States. And that's cool. Yeah. My brother had all NASA and space and I had all like history and wow. civil war, world war II and that models. Cool. And yeah. That is very cool. So it, it was kind of my whole life. And then, but I never did anything with it. And then I was in advertising and worked in agencies all over the country. And then, uh, I came upon this ad on Facebook and it said, stop the casino in Gettysburg. Mm. And it was a local millionaire and a, I believe a $4.6 billion gaming company that wanted to put a casino half a mile from the battlefield at Gettysburg Ooh, in okay. Pennsylvania. And I reached out to this grassroots group and I said, what can I do to help? Ah, and okay. so for completely no money, I brought in all my friends Wow. And then I reached out to uh, Hollywood celebrities and historical celebrities and John Williams, who mm -hmm. did the music the composer, for yeah. for E.T. and Raiders yeah. of Lost Ark and Star Wars and Harry Potter. And, yeah. And uh, and he did, he provided the music. Wow. And then we created all these videos. Four score and seven years ago. Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men, all men, that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We've come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it. Far above our poor power to add or detract, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget. Never forget. But it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who bought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. 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 And that government of the people. By the people. For the people shall not perish from the earth. Instagram that when uh, Jeff was talking with us at One Million Cups about how to work with well-known people. It's, it might also be on my channel, but check on Instagram under Biz Marketing Solutions by Lily because uh, I did a, I believe I did a live shot of that perform or performance that talk. Yeah. <laughs> performance. I sang and there was a big <laughs> operatic ending. <laughs> God, I, I, I wish that history stuck on me so well. Usually if I read a novel that has history wrapped in with it somehow that right. sticks better. That's how I learned Spanish history. But he was speaking about his dad previously. Happy belated 95th birthday to Mr. Griffith, right? Happy 95th, Woo! Papa. That's a big deal. Uh, but what's interesting about that is like the celebrities uh, that I brought together for Gettysburg and, and have brought together for other uh, projects is 
uh, you know, people are like, how did, how did you get these people? How did you get them to like sign up? How did you get John Williams to do the music? Um, I asked. That's, how did you get the guts up to ask? I just asked them. I, I, you can go online and, you know, like imdbpro.com. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Or uh, I think there's one called agentinfo.com. Uh, and you can find their publicists, you can find their ah, agents the okay. and, uh, yeah, I mean, unless you have a personal connection with yeah. one of these people, but what I found with the Gettysburg thing was, uh, once you get one, then you can, mm. you can say, oh, well I have Ken Burns and mm -hmm. Ken Burns, you know, historical sure. documentarian and yeah. I got Ken and then I got David McCullough, who is a two time Pulitzer prize winning author who did John Adams and Truman, the books, um, uh, yeah. And uh, Mornings on Horseback about Theodore Roosevelt. So I got them, and then it was like kind of this build of like people. And then Morgan Freeman wanted to do it, but he was in Sarajevo. He couldn't do it in the schedule because mm. we were very, we had a very tight timeline when we had to do it. Um, you know, I hounded Tom Hanks, and his people kept saying no. And I was like, I'm not giving up. I'm going to just keep going back. And, and then the interesting thing was, we reached out to President Obama uh, and the office never got back to us, but uh, the First Lady's office, Michelle Obama, we reached out to her, we spoke to them, uh, they never said yes or no, but hmm. then the day of the hearing where we showed the videos, uh, Michelle and the two daughters just happened to be on the Gettysburg battlefield that day. <laughs> wow. Pure coincidence yeah. that they just happened to be on the battlefield wow. at the day of the hearing. So that was pretty cool it that cool. they obviously were aware of it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, it was, it was interesting. Like Colin Powell's people were very interested, but again, it was like a scheduling thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people just flat out said no. And some people were like, mm, like, They'd love to do it, but scheduling wise. This this reminds me of two things. I just saw a documentary for what it took to put together the song We Are the World. Yes. Is it the anniversary or something? Oh, it could it? be, yeah. Okay, because I see it everywhere. And it was unreal what it took to pull together all the singers. And it just happened that the, was it the Grammys? The Music Awards. Anyway, the Music Awards were on that same night, and that was the, easiest most efficient way to pull together everybody because everybody was in town yeah right but in order to find all the people and to talk with them to make sure that they were willing to afterwards right it sounds like your story and when you say that you know you go to their agent you didn't seem scared of it and it reminds me i was working in recruiting more than two decades ago with fred montana and he he said the funniest thing that well, famous people zip up their flies the same way everybody else does. I'm going, wow, that really, that really does it for me. They're just humans. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it was interesting because like even like one of the celebrities, and I won't say which one, uh, his agent said, oh, okay, so when is the car going to pick him up? And I said, the car? What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, you're going to send a car service to come and get him. I was like, I'm not, no. I don't have a car service. I'm buying the Dunkin' Donuts and that's what we're going to have, you know, for breakfast. And uh, I said, no, absolutely not. I mean, like, and, and if he can't do it, then he can't do it. And they were like, what? And I said, no, I said, we have no money. There's no budget. Everyone's volunteering their time. And, and, they, and he goes, he goes, okay, 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 that's fine. That's awesome. He's like completely, you know, here's this like tough Hollywood agent who was, you know, trying to, and, and he completely backpedaled and he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I said, well, if, you know, if he can't, oh, that's awesome. if he needs a car service, like seriously. And then he calls me back like, like 10 minutes later and he goes, oh, could you tell me where the parking lots are? Like nearby? I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I can do that. And uh, what, go ahead. what got you into the creative world? I mean, what made you think, oh, this is what I want to do? Well, it's interesting. I actually I actually uh, went to college for broadcasting. I okay. was going to be TV, radio, and film. Okay. And that was kind of my goal. And I did a semester of it, and the people were so weird. <laughs> they were like, like I literally, they, were, they had like a big, well, they called it a convocation, and it was like a big pit class, and all the people from the major came and sat in the pit class. And this guy down, sits down next to me and he's like, hi, I'm Hank. 
Hi, how are you? What's your major? You know, I'm like, oh, shut up. You're weird. So, yeah, it kind of turned me off right away. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was always, I was always designing things. And uh, so I wanted to be in advertising. That's what I wanted to do. I loved TV commercials. I loved mm. ads. And then, uh, so I went through the journalism department. So I actually learned how to write and then I taught myself design. Wow. So design of design of ads, design of logos, design of posters, but conceptually, you know, like how do you, how do you create a concept, you know, versus just it's pretty type. So, true. so now I do pretty type, but, but it's a got a concept to it. I would be the one who would look at the finished product and tell you whether it's too busy from a very visual person's point of view, but to design it, forget it. Well, and, wow. and I'm a big advocate of hierarchy of message. So it, like a lot of times, even like just the simplest brochure or PowerPoint presentation, there needs to be a hierarchy. Like people just go, I need all this stuff in there. I want all of this, all this information's got to be in there. Or, you know, we're having a, a, a boat event, you know, we're having a sailing event this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then you see this poster and it's just like, it's like yeah. this, like somebody like, you know, threw things on it <laughs> and there's no hierarchy. And so what's the messaging? What's the, mm. what's the, what's the most important? And then down from that. Right. Okay. And, or, Here's a here's a show like I've been designing um, some a creative for a, a dear friend of mine who d is doing a off Broadway show right now, okay. and this is the third show I've designed for him. And it's real important that like people know what's the name of the show, yeah. What is it about? Okay. And now give me all the ticket information. Okay. But everything shouldn't have be the same size. True. Right. It's like here's main visual here's headline, here's, and then now I get ticket information. And now obviously with QR codes and mm -hmm. all that, it just makes it so easy because you can just go, you know, buy ticket, yeah. pop, pop that. The thing that always confuses me is how to decide on a font. I mean, all I think of is Times New Roman sometimes bores me and Arial looks approachable. But how do you, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm a typography freak. Are you really? Oh, I love <laughs> typography. I could spend, I literally spend hours Wow. My my wife and I will be like <laughs> laying in bed and she's like, you're always on your phone. Who are you texting? And I'm like, I'm looking at fonts. And she's like, you're, you're kidding huh. me. And I'll show her my phone. Yeah. And it's like, I'm looking at fonts. Yeah. Because I'm like obsessed with. Well, they send different messages. Absolutely. Sorry, didn't mean and wrong. no, absolutely. It, it, send, it sends different messages. It has a different tone. Mm -hmm. It has a different feel. And like, I've, I've done things that are like, supposed to be like distressed and supposed to be like really rugged and then that but i use a really elegant font hmm. and then it's like it's that juxtaposition Aha. of like you were expecting this but i'm not going to give you that i'm yeah. going to give you this it's very psychological yeah wow and other than people reading left to right is there other some other uh, basic psychology of reading i have not a clue okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. If it looks pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. all in. Wow. Yeah. And, and it's, if you can think of what has been maybe your most challenging project so far. I would say the most challenging projects I've worked on is, is more because the client is challenging, not necessarily because the assignment is challenging. Because I think sometimes clients just get in their own way. Mm -hmm. Um they say they want something, but they're not really, they can't really back it up. Uh, or they, or like I said before, where it's, they just want a ton of stuff, uh -huh. but everything shouldn't get the same level of Attention. emphasis. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, that's usually the challenging projects that I've worked on where, where you just have a really, really difficult client. Um, you know, because I've worked on I've worked on like really difficult, uh, you know, projects or, or products mm -hmm. where you know, like pharmaceutical, especially. I mean, that that stuff is tough because 
there's certain things you can say, certain things oh, you can't say, God. and then what the product actually does. And so how do you present that? And how do you present it in a legal way? How do you Ooh. present it in a way that everyone will be happy? Wow. So that kind of stuff is always very challenging. You just made me realize, I mean, I do fractional representation for people who can't be at a networking event. And I thought, wow, would I really be able to or even want to represent somebody who has got maybe, I, I'm really interested in medical products and how they help the world. I just wonder if I could be that, is the word precise or or cautious? <laughs> yeah, well, in, in my, my uh, kind of my approach to everything I do is is a pretty in your face. I always try to be surprising or shocking um, mm-hmm. uh, to get attention. I, I like to do things that uh, you know are unexpected, and so then if you have somebody who's like really trying to pull that back and trying to be conservative, it's like okay, but you're not going to get attention. Mm-hmm. You can do that, and no one's going to see it. No one's going to watch or no one's going to pay attention for longer than wow. it's the time that it's on. Yeah. So that's that's usually a, a convincing factor. It's like, how do you get somebody to like jump on that bandwagon? Makes sense. You know, and so and that's what I the magic of working on your own is you can pick and choose your clients. Yeah. And say, that's yeah. the kind of client I want to work with. I want to work with those kind of clients who are willing to. Not necessarily take risks, but who are open-minded enough to say, hey, maybe I don't know mm-hmm. how to do this. The reason I'm hiring yeah. Jeff is because I can't do it myself. That makes sense. But if they want to do it for me, then that's the wrong client. Sure. Right? That makes sense. Well, one thing you did that really surprised me that was such a borderline aha moment. And I say borderline because... So being I knew you were right, I just never thought of it in the way you presented it. Meaning that we were talking about branding and at One Million Cups. And he said, everything you do is branding. The way you hand out your business cards is branding. So if you're going around the room and flicking them on people's desks, just like, I don't have any time to say hi, is that how you want to brand yourself? And I thought. Ooh, ooh, burr. Very, <laughs> very, very true. Right. Very true. Right. <laughs> I was like, yeah. spot on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the you know, the font you pick, the colors you pick, the the paper stock you pick, you know. Your body language. Your body language, how you dress, how you present yourself. Um, you know, are you the person who stands in the corner and just is like, hi, you know, huh? are you mumbling? <laughs> yeah. Are you, you know, are you talking like a teenage boy? Are you, uh, 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 uh. you know, it's like, how are you presenting yourself? How are you carrying yourself? You know, is that kind of person like, I want to work with them. Mm-hmm. Or do they have to discount everything and go, well, he looks like a piece of crap and he dresses like shit. And, <laughs> uh, you know, his uh, business card looks like he, you know, printed it off, uh, off his printer at home, you know, or does it feel sophisticated does it feel solid is is this somebody i can trust is this somebody i can work with you know who understands um you know so many times i've had pushback from clients who say well i don't really want that thick business card and you go that's fine yeah that's fine that's not for everybody but if you want to get attention i'm telling you Mm. you hand somebody a thick business card the first thing they're going to say is "Ooh." literally Every single time I hand somebody a bit my business card, they go, ooh, wow. ooh. And they even think you invest a little more in your business because yeah. we know the thin ones don't cost too much. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, can go to, I can go to FedEx office and I can get, you know, business cards for 27 bucks or, you know, $14. Or I can spend 60 bucks and get some really nice ones. You know, I'm not saying you have to go letterpress or you have to go foil stamp or anything like that. You don't have to, but believe me, if you hand somebody a card like that and, and then, and, you know, counter that with, I've had a lot of people say to me, well, I'm not going to spend my money on that because I can do contactless and I can just scan my information with a phone. Well, that's fine. Yeah. But once it's in my phone, I will lose it. Mm-hmm. versus a business card 
that may pop up someplace. That yeah, may be in my pocket or in my purse or in my, in my drawer. At some point, that will come back versus a contact. Uh, once it's in there, I'm, I'm never, ever going to reach, I hear you. look for that again. And I asked for post-consumer content for my paper. And thank you, Andy Schmidt of Minuteman Press, because your team rocked it. Thank you, Andy Schmidt. Seriously, awesome. I, uh, you were talking about little uh, presenting yourself like a little boy with the with the cards, which made me think about the fact that you're a dad. Yes. You've got two. Sons. I'm a stepdad. Yeah, I okay. have two, 14 cool. and 18. Wow, tough ages. Potentially tough. I don't know. Yes, I I speak fluent teenage mumble. Oh, excellent. I do. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, I actually want to create a. Um, uh, a Google Maps um, voice, I think Waze, Waze does it where they have different voices. I want to do one that's teenager. I like it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Turn here. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be pretty funny. Oh my God. <laughs> and what, uh, just wrapping it up in a moment or two here, what would you say, oh, what do you wish more people knew about you? Um... I would say that's a good question. I would say it's that I can approach everything creatively. I mean, I do, I do print, I do magazines, I do uh, social media. I've, I'm not a web coder, but I have designed many websites. I design whiskey labels. Ooh. I design books. I've designed covers. I've designed complete content in the inside. I'm actually working on a, a two volume set right now uh, premium book project, uh, video work, high end video work. Um, so I guess like for me, like people, some people are like, Oh, you gotta be very specific what you do. I think what I want people to know is I can do a wide, a wide range, range of, yeah. of different things and approach it creatively. He would also be really good at health related since he worked with men's health and he's buff, etc. So he takes it seriously. At least I'm guessing. So. Yeah, I mean, I worked. I worked at. I was creative director at Integrated Marketing for six years at Men's Health in New York City, and uh, yeah, that was a fantastic uh, project, and that was yeah, that was a great job. Although he's not anal retentive about it, because he was really nice, and part of his branding was that he's generous, and he brought us all donuts at one point. <laughs> Side note. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I'm a Moder big fan of donuts. <laughs> Matter big fan. Exactly. Moderation and moderation. Right? <laughs> yes, I'm a Coca-Cola drinker too. So. Oh my gosh, really? Oh yes, I have to have my Coke in the morning. Do you yeah. rinse your mouth out afterwards? Absolutely oh. not. <gasps> you let the acid get you. Of oh. course I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good, it's savory, yum. So, what do people miss? misunderstand about you often like i thought you were xyz or <laughs> um, wow that's a good one um what do they misunderstand about me i've i've had people say to me like because i often wear suits suits and ties i love i love to dress up and i think people have met me as certainly in the minneapolis area when i when i first moved here or when they first meet me, they think I'm like really snooty. You know, I think it's, they kind of like, oh, he's a New Yorker. Oh, oh, oh big city guy, you know? And I'm from Wisconsin. I mean, I'm born and raised Wisconsin and, you know, moved away out of college, but you know, I'm still, I am a New Yorker. I feel, I consider myself a New Yorker, but, but I'm very, very much a Midwestern boy. So, yeah. And if you saw his wife, you'd say, we, have you guys been in People Magazine, or do you just look like you're in People Magazine? <laughs> thank, like, you. Oh. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank really cool. you. Well, the funny thing is, uh, funny New York story. One time I was walking down the street, and uh, and I was when I was living there, and I saw these, uh, it was three moms and three daughters, and they were walking down the street, and I was on my way to work, and I turned and I said, uh, hey, cheeseheads. <laughs> and they, like, looked at me, and they're like, I said, you're from Wisconsin. They're like, oh my God, how did you know? <laughs> I was like, well, you're wearing a Packers shirt. You're wearing a Milwaukee Brewers sweatshirt. You're you're wearing a Wisconsin Badgers hat. Like they were all decked out in their Wisconsin gear. I was like, well, yeah, you're kind yeah, of a thanks. dead giveaway oh, that's here. Talk about branding and logos. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, wow, representing. Oh my God. Yeah, it was pretty funny. 
Last one or two questions here. Oh, I heard you asking. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what is one of your favorite pastimes? My Good favorite question. Favorite pastimes. Oh. Uh, I mean, like a hobby or something like that? I mean, I would say, I mean, football. I love football. Absolutely love football. NFL, college. Yeah. Yeah, my 14-year-old stepson plays football, too. So, yeah, oh, it's like I'm... I'm like all in. That's, I would say any pastime. Yeah. And I love to travel. I love good food. Ooh. Um, yeah. It's hard not to love good food when you live in New York City. That's true. There's just insane restaurants. So yeah, yeah it's, it's like, yeah, I love good food. And so the uh, last question, are you guys ready? Of course you're ready. Did somebody I, ask that? Is, oh yeah. <laughs> the last question is, Finish the sentence, please. So it's actually not a question, it's a statement. No one would believe if they saw me... Swing dance. Really, why? I taught acrobatic aerials for eight years uh, for swing dancers. I think I read that some little bit. Yeah, <gasps> throwing over the head, down Ooh. the back, through the legs, That's around cool. the waist. And, uh, and I'm obsessed with retro clothing. I actually had a magazine for four and a half years, national really? magazine called Atomic. And it was all about retro culture. Cool. And uh, it was right kind of the end of the 90s, early 2000s, when swing was really big in LA and yeah. New York. And, uh, and so I, I like this ridiculous wardrobe of retro, I like it. retro clothing and ties and uh, wow. pocket squares and fedoras and yeah, it was this incredible collection that I don't wow. use anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I helped teach, uh, acrobatic aerials for swing dancers for eight years. Wow. Yeah. So what you get to do, first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to do this super absolutely fun interview is you're going to swing over please to the subscribe button. You catch that swing over. Yes, and hit the reminder bell so that you never miss an episode. No, thanks for your support. Comment below what you got out of this interview, like the favorite part of it. Appreciate you guys.